Hi, I'm Samuel Prather, founder of Go Music and Reason user since 2003. Welcome to A Reason to Create. In today's episode, I wanted to take a second to cover the topic of swing. I'm sorry it took so long to get this video up. I've been really busy, had to travel out of town and also had a death in the family. So thank you for being patient and I'm happy to be with you today to tackle this topic. So oftentimes we hear the term swing used in production lingo. And I wanted to just demystify that and show how we can use that in our reason tracks. As far as I'm aware, the term swing comes from swing music, which is counted in a triplet as opposed to a duple feel. So for example, instead of counting it one and two and three and four and, it's more like one and two and three and four and. It has a little lilt to it. The big difference here is how we split up a note value. So in this case, a quarter note, one, two, three, four, can be split evenly in half, or it can be cut in three pieces. So I can count it one and two and three and four and, or I can count it one pullet, two pullet, three pullet, four pullet. The basic idea of swing in Western music comes from splitting that quarter note into three pieces and dropping one. So you have one pullet, two pullet, three pullet, four pullet, one, let two, let three, let four. I'm just gonna drop this in here for the jazz guys watching. No, it does not have to be a perfectly executed triplet for something to swing. In fact, that probably will keep it from swinging if it is exactly that. If you haven't seen my other video about the pocket, it's probably a good idea to check that out, as well as the video that I have on locking with the bass. Those would probably be helpful to what I'm gonna cover today. But my main point here is that swing is much more than just splitting a beat up into three pieces and dropping one when it comes to the real world and playing. I would argue that most music that's created by human beings does not split a quarter note evenly into two pieces all the time. And likewise, it also does not split it into three pieces all the time perfectly like a computer. What we do instead is we tend to play towards one polarity or the other. Remember, the downbeats are gonna be there regardless, so it's really the upbeats that create that swing feel. Another really important key factor is whether this is being played in front of or behind the beat. So somebody that's not playing so much towards the triplet but it's playing behind the beat can still sound like they're swinging. That's why when you play live, it's not this super rigid definition of swing because there's another dimension, which is whether you're playing behind or in front of the beat. Of course, also, if you're trying to be good at playing any kind of music that has a swing feel, whether it's jazz or Latin or samba, all of those things require a ton of listening to really get your head around the way it's supposed to sound. Okay, so now that we've gotten the housekeeping out the way, let's get into reason, and I'm gonna show you what I mean from a technical sense about how to apply swing to your tracks. Just to keep things simple, I just used a hi-hat to show these different note values. And just so we don't lose anybody that's not up on music theory, from a rhythmic standpoint, if we have a whole pie and we cut it in half, that would be a half Pi, right? In our case, a half note. If we cut that half and half, then we get a quarter note. If we cut that half and half, then we get an eighth note. And if we cut that half and half, we'd get a sixteenth note. Each one of these note values that I just said is exactly half of the one before it. So that means it's going to be twice as fast in terms of the way that it sounds. Here's our quarter note. I also have the click on a quarter note just as a reference. Here's an eighth note. Notice it cuts the click exactly in half. One and two and three and four and. The eighth note triplet is gonna cut that quarter note into three even pieces. We're gonna drop the middle one out. So one pullet, two pullet, three pullet, four pullet, one, let two, let three, let four. This is what it sounds like. The 
the next note value would be the 16th note. So that's splitting our quarter note up into four pieces. It sounds like this. I count that one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. The next note value is even smaller, and that's a 16th note triplet. So that would split our quarter note up into not four, but six even pieces. What the 16th note triplet does is split up our quarter note into six even pieces, or you could also think about it as being the eighth note now being split up into three pieces. If we're splitting the eighth note up into three even pieces, once again, we're going to drop the middle one and we get this. So one pullet, ampullet, two pullet, ampullet, three pullet, ampullet, four pullet, ampullet. That's a mouthful. You don't have to say it like that. You can count however you want. Just make sure that it's split up into six even pieces. So in terms of what this means for you as a producer, all of these values that I've played for you today are perfectly split, either in two pieces or three pieces, quarter note, eighth note, etc. That's not how real musicians play, so I try to avoid using those exact values as much as I can. I'm going to turn on the regroove mixer, and I've already put my eighth note in channel B1. When we open that regroove mixer, we see the two most important knobs, which are slide and shuffle. Another way to think about shuffle might be the swing amount. The slide is just how far in front of or behind the beat we want things to get. The shuffle knob is kind of finicky. It only works on smaller subdivisions. So if you don't have anything smaller than an eighth note in your track, then it won't be affected at all by changing the swing value. But if you have something like a 16th note, then you can hear that shuffle working. Now, one advantage to the shuffle is it actually lets you go a little past what a triplet would be. It's like kind of weird. It's almost like it's to the next level of subdivision. And that comes in handy sometimes, but most of the time you're actually trying to get a value in between that eighth note and that eighth note triplet or that sixteenth note and that sixteenth note triplet. But that's just for my taste. You'll notice when I set the shuffle value to 66%, it literally sounds exactly the same as when I just use 16th note triplets and throw out the middle one. So a 66% shuffle value is exactly the same as like a technically perfect swing. I would argue for most musical purposes that somewhere in between 66 and 50 is where most of music lives. None of it really lives on the edges. It's always somewhere in the middle. Unfortunately, because of that limitation about resolution, you can't apply swing to eighth notes, right? And swung eighth notes are an important part of getting a good swing feel sometimes. So how I get around that is I separate my upbeats and my downbeats so that I can affect those upbeats individually. You'll notice here that I'm taking my eighth note groove, I have my upbeats on the top lane, and then my downbeats on the bottom lane, and I've put the top lane into B1 in our regroove mixer, so that will be affected separately.
Notice how the shuffle knob has no effect on these eighth notes. That's where the slide comes in. And I think that's actually even a better tool to use when you're trying to create the swing feel. And you could hear as I moved the slider, it moved from that duple feel to that triple feel. And there are a ton of places in between. So all the way to one side is actually technically that perfect triplet that we talked about. And 50% in the middle is right where cutting the note in half is. I'm personally partial to the way that it feels when that slide is somewhere in between and you really can get a more organic kind of feeling out of it than just that triplet and quantizing everything to that triplet beat. Now, once again, you'll notice if I turn the slide all the way up on just the upbeats, it sounds exactly the same as if I take eighth note triplets and just get rid of the middle one. Here's the eighth note triplet with the middle note dropped. And here's eighth notes with the upbeats being slid over 120 ticks all the way to the right. Now remember that these swing values are the current underneath of your track. Even if they're not always being played, that pulse is felt. You're really missing out on a lot in terms of your production capability if you're not using that slide and that shuffle knob to kind of get that feel to sound a little bit more organic. The best part is that all of these things are completely non-destructive, so if you change your mind, you just turn it off or change the slider to a different position and it's fine. The other thing that's cool about it is you have 32 different banks in the regroove mixer so you can apply different levels of shuffle or different levels of slide. You can literally have 32 different instruments all have their own slightly different feel if you want. So don't overuse the quantize function even though that might seem like an easy way out. Get in there in that regroove mixer and try to figure out some other ways that your track can sound. Also, make sure that as you listen to music to try to broaden your horizons, that you pay attention to where everything falls in terms of slide and shuffle. Every type of music has a feel that's specific. And the way that the quarter note sits in relationship to the eighth notes is a huge part of that. Hopefully that cleared up shuffle and swing for anybody that didn't really understand the way that those work in tandem with each other. So that's basically what I wanted to show you today about the difference between shuffle and swing and understanding that swinging something when you're playing live is a little bit different than when you produce. It's not as technical. If you like the way that I explained this, then please go ahead and hit the like, subscribe button, and the bell so that you know when I'm coming out with new content. And please don't forget to leave ideas for future shows and questions in the comments so that I can get to it. I'll do the best that I can to get to it in a timely fashion. Also, I have merchandise for sale on my website. I have all the stuff down in the link, so please check that out. My name is Samuel Prather. Hopefully today I gave you a reason to create.